Hey everybody, welcome back to another Brigandine video. Today we are going to be talking about the Republic of Guimol. So this is Brigandine Legend of Runerzia that I will be talking about today. This is the newer Brigandine game that's coming out. This is the this video is going to be titled The Kingdom Cast of the Republic of Guimol. So this is a republic. It's um this is an interesting storyline right here. And we're going to find out, you know, all the information about the knights that are here and, you know, what they're what they're all about and, and all that sort of stuff. So this is going to be kind of fun to go through and check out and discuss. I'm also going to give you my opinion and my thoughts and everything about each of the characters and who they kind of tie into as far as, uh, you know, Grand Edition or Legend of Forcina, uh, whichever version you play. They're both basically the same game just one has a boss fight and one doesn't and some cutscenes and you know one one has animation the other one has pixelated fights so you know they're a little different but anyways uh, let's go over this so this is a republic okay so this is a republic let us read about this republic here all right established by Moana Carradine after embedding the five mana stones into the continent in a mana release, it is the self-proclaimed birthplace of Runites housing the Burgundine of Glory. When the former Rune god Faith splintered into two factions, Republic of Guimol's Moana sect and Mana Silesia theocracies, Zai sect, a mana stone 30 years war erupted. The scourge in turn triggers a new war on a continent. You know, I, I like that you put uh, part of my name in there. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so uh, this is a pretty interesting little storyline here, but this is a part of the um, effect, the activation towards a new war on a continent. So it's going to be pretty cool, pretty cool. So what they ended up doing is they embedded the five mana stones in the continent in a mana release to release the mana. Okay, birthplace of rune knights. And it's got the Brigandine of Glory, so that's what you can take from it. So they kind of, uh, you know, they might have triggered a war here, but let's go ahead and check them out. Uh, their emblem is this to... Two unicorns here with a red banner background. So, you know, if you like that, that's that's pretty cool. All right, so this is the leader, Eliza Uzala. Eliza Uzala. That sounds pretty cool. I like how they put that word, you know, those words together. It sounds pretty nice. All right, so the character voice is Reina Ueda. Reina Ueda. If I'm not saying these right, please let me know. I'd like to try to say these a little more accurately. I'm just saying it the best I can. So, anyways, she is the ruler of the country of the Republic of Guimol. And uh, here we have a female, 23-year-old. Her initial class is Rose Knight. So she is a Rose Knight. That is a That probably is going to be a very specific class that probably she might only have so i don't know but you know we'll find out as as the um as the game comes out and we we understand more information at that point but let's go ahead and talk about it okay so the daughter of the bedridden 15th president of the republic of gumol alden uzala or is that aiden Oh, that's Alden. A national crisis and a commission by the sword of Ang, Ang changes her life forever. The sword of Ang. I was just reading about him. Okay. Pr 
previously concealing her identity, to dance on the stage, she now dons the Brigandine of Glory on a battlefield as a leader of Guimol. Just as the three Mul Ang sisters once did, she now devotes her life to protecting the nation of glory. So this is a pretty complicated story, it seems. And uh, what I think there was an Ang that I was just reading about in Orzalio. And so she's one of the three Mul Ang sisters or Ang sisters. So she's got two other sisters. She devotes her life to protect the nation of glory. She was concealing her identity to dance on stage. So it's kind of like, she's kind of like a Cortina. I'd have to almost just go ahead and um, guess she could be like a Cortina or, you know, let me know who you think this kind of resembles here. But to dance on stage, Cortina wanted to be the best dancer in uh, the legend of Forcina. And so Eliza... I don't know. Maybe it's maybe there's a little bit of a, a close semblance there. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But that'd be kind of interesting if she's kind of like the new Cortina here. You know, if she's kind of the new Cortina, um, that'd be kind of funny. So yeah, just let me know about that. I'd like to uh, get your opinion about that. So. So it just kind of came down to a national crisis. And the sword of Aang changes her life forever. So this is a pretty interesting story. This sounds like it's going to get a little complex. It sounds like there's a lot more to it than I could probably talk about right at the moment. But we'll see when it comes out. So when I get more information, I'll make another follow-up video to this to probably talk more about the story and all that. So... Let's move on here. Next character, Mua. <laughs> I think it's Mua. 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 I don't know. Is it is it Mua? It could be Mua. If it's more of a French kind of dialogue here, it could be Mua. But Mua kind of sounds like a, a kiss. So maybe it's Mua. Mua. Or Ma. <laughs> I don't know what you got. You gotta tell me what this, what the right way to say this. Is. Otherwise, I'm gonna just say "mua" every time I I see this guy. So I don't know. That could be kind of fun, though. I I might enjoy doing that. I might do it just because I can. So we'll see. Anyways, uh, character voice uh, in uh, Japanese is going to be Shiwato Kashi. Okay, he is a male, age 64. He's a wizard. So he's going to be like Gish. He's going to be um he's going to be the next Gish up or I mean Gish. Uh sorry, it's a kind of a side joke. But anyways, uh so what is his story all about? He is um the foremost mage in the Republic of Guimol and one of the most powerful mages on the continent. Younger knights look up to him as a model. However, he has a hard time instilling the same respect in his willful granddaughter, Sugar. Due to Eliza losing her mother when she was just a child and her father always being busy with his presidential duties, it fell to Mua to educate both Sugar and Eliza, imparting his knowledge about magic to them as well. So... That's pretty interesting. I'm guessing he's going to be kind of like a Gish. Um, could he be like a Gish or could he be kind of maybe more like a Biart? Biarte? Maybe if this is a little more in that style, maybe he's a little more like Biarte. Is he like Biarte or is he like Gish? Please leave that in the comments down below. I would love to know your opinion on it about this character. Mua! <laughs> Mua! <laughs> This is going to be so much fun just going crazy with this guy's name. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's let's go on here. Let's go on. So he's got a daughter, granddaughter named Sugar, and she's at the last little place here. So we'll get to her in a, a, at the end here. Um, let's go with uh, Darian here. <clears throat> this guy looks uh, kind of like a berserk guy. 
like a berserker. I'm going to guess. I'm just going to go ahead and guess. Anyways, Darian. His character voice is Shin, Shin Ichiro. I think I'm saying that right. Shinichiro Kamio. Kamo? Kamio? Shirichio Kamio. Every time I'm trying to read something here, the words are so small. I, I try to blow it up, but the TV's so far away. Sorry. Um, all right, so he is a male. He's 30. He's a knight. And so he's a knight. I'm wondering if he's going to move into like Avenger class or something. He could just be a knight. I, you know, that might turn into Paladin class. I guess we'll find out. But um, this guy looks pretty beastly. So he's probably a pretty good knight. Yeah, um, let's read about his profile here. This resilient and highly skilled black bird knight is a member of the Barrett clan. Abducted from the Elmera Autonomous region as a child, he was trained to be a docile and loyal soldier. The Black Bird unit is made of Barrett fighters and is a vital military asset to the Republic of Guamol. Unlike his other Barrett clansmen, Dariot exhibits exceptional musical talent. The melodies he performs on the Valero are full of a gentle melancholy feelings he bears for his clan and the and they resonate deeply with Elsa. Okay. That was that was interesting. I just read about the Barrett clan. I thought it was mostly comprising of Picts. Maybe he's a Pict too, maybe because he's grown up he's got these elf ears here. Maybe he's um a part of that tribe or a part of that race, which is probably part of the pixie race, I I suppose. I guess we'll find out um, soon enough here. But um, a skilled black bird knight. So I'm guessing that could be filling the Avenger role. Blackbird, crow, blackbird, raven, something like that. This could be filling that role. So... He was trained to be a docile and loyal soldier. So he could be maybe the Cavalier class or maybe the Dark Knight class. Maybe it's left to you to decide which role he's going to take here because, you know, he, he plays on a Valero, uh, a bit of a gentle melancholy song. So it's kind of like a little bit of a sad, bittersweet song. And, um, yeah, that's, that's all I can tell you. I uh, guess we'll have to see with him, but he might be a pretty good knight to um to choose and to try out and all that let's go ahead here let's move on to Cain wow we are going biblical here Cain all right let's read about Cain Cain character voice Wataru Komada I can say that word right all right <laughs> Gender male, age 28. Initial class is a knight. All right. <clears throat> Rune Knight of the Republic of Guamol. His father is known for his rivalry with Guamol's treasure, President Alden. Because of this, he is constantly at odds with Elza. Although a capable Rune Knight, his pride and cynical attitude make him far less popular than Elza. He is well versed in monster ecology and uses that knowledge to consistently research new formation theories and craft battle strategies. So this is the strategist here. This would probably be the strategist for the Republic of Gomol. That's kind of what I'm it's kind of what I'm getting. That's kind of the the feel that I'm getting here, but he is he's not a very popular guy, but he does a lot of strategies and things, so he's um um, you know, he's, he's helping, he's got his own way to help, you know, although it's maybe not as popular, but that's pretty much him. That's pretty much him. His, uh, his father is known for his rivalry with the Guamol's treasure. President Alden. So 
When I said this was kingdom initially, this could very well more potentially be just a republic, not so much a kingdom, more of a republic. Um, I know that Scalia was kind of known as, um, now what kind of republic was it called? It was, um, um, I don't know how to describe it, but um, my understanding is that um, Escalio was sort of like a banana republic. Uh, it wasn't, you know, there was a lot of, as far as what I've been able to put together, there was a lot of lush lands and territories and stuff, but people suffered there. So, you know, even though there was a lot of resources, people were still not able to prosper uh, in that land. Uh, so I kind of took Escalio to be sort of a banana republic. Uh, could this be like a good republic or a better republic? I suppose, but there is war going on right here, so it doesn't really tell me like how well the country's doing. It just kind of says that they're at war. So uh, I believe this is probably more of just a republic than a kingdom because it is mentioning a president uh, quite a number of times now. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and say. It's more of a republic than a kingdom. But I will still title this Kingdom Cast because most of the countries are going to be kingdoms or empires. And, uh, you know. So anyways, um, yeah, he's kind of a cynic. You know, he's um, he's a strategist. Uh, battlecraft. He, he knows monster ecology, so he knows how monsters work well and what they do. So he's going to use them in an efficient way in battle. But... Um, Kane is probably, he's a knight. He might go into kind of the Dark Knight theme. I don't know how they're going to like make him more of a healer, more of a, because you know how you go through those classes. You either, you either um, go through the Berserk class to become an Avenger or you go through the Knight class to become a Paladin. Uh, I don't know if the Knight class is going to let you divulge into Avenger or Paladin. I guess we'll find out. But, you know, that's that's Kane right there, so... Love him or hate him, he's a knight of the Republic of Guamal. So let's move on here. So Kate, let's click on Kate here. Let's talk about Kate. Kate, Kate, Kate. Kate, Kate, Kate. Kate is... Kate is Kate. <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's, let's, let's talk about her. All right. Character voice is Megumi Toyogushi. Toyogushi? Megumi Toyogushi? Did I say your name right? I hope so. Let me know. All uh, right. Female, age 27. Initial class is Rogue. Rogue. She was, oh, you know what? I think I know what this is. Rogue. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me clear my throat. Uh, rogue is probably going to be a ninja class. So... Um, what level of ninja class? Let's, I guess we're going to find out, you know, but, um, I, it says Barrett clan there and I'm looking at the long ears and I'm thinking pixie. So pixies aren't monsters in this game to fight. Pixies are part of the knight class. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about that. So a rune knight of the blackbird unit from the Barrett clan she is unconcerned about her background as a slave knight and remains cheerful and pure of heart. She responds to Elza's call for rune knights willing to protect the glory of the Republic of Gumol and joins her troop alongside Darien, each with their own intentions. I don't know. If I'm, I, I'm just, I'm kind of trying to hint that they have different intentions here so i hope i got that to be across you know but got that across but <laughs> i don't know what they are uh together <laughs> together they shoulder their sorrowful fates nobody quite knowing for what purpose they march toward the battlefield you know what i wonder if this has something to do if it's sort of a similar role to olin and um, I wonder if it has uh, not Olin. Uh, what am I thinking? I'm watching too much Final Fantasy. Um, to Meltorphus 
and in need. I wonder if this is going to make some kind of connections between the two. What do you think? What do you think? Because they have some secret stuff going on here and they're not saying what it is. So we're going to have to play the game to figure out what that actually is. See what that's all about. So this will be pretty cool, but I'm guessing she's a ninja class. She's got the two blades held behind her. You know, ninjas kind of hold their blades pointed backwards. Um, I mean, from from a design role, but I, I don't know. Personally, ninjas. I mean, if I knew some ninjas, I'd tell you. But also, if I knew ninjas, I might have to. Well, you know, you, I, I might not be able to tell you and, and you get away with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I'm going to guess she's the ninja class. Let me know what you think. I think Rogue is is somewhere along the ninja class line, and it's probably it's probably there. So let's go on to the next character here, the daughter of what's his face, the daughter of or the granddaughter of Mua. So the granddaughter of Mua, I'm pretty sure is going to be her right here. So all right, I'm gonna have so much fun with that. <laughs> If I'm saying names wrong, I gotta know. Let me know before I make a total buffoon of myself. Like, but if you like that, then I guess we'll just run with it. All right, anyways, Sugar. Yes, Sugar. Okay, character voice, Coco Hayashi. <laughs> okay. Um, gender female, age 13, Enchantress. Okay, this tomboyish granddaughter of Mua looks up to Eliza as an older sister. Although still young and immature, she has great talent, magical potential, having inherited Mua's blood. Gamol's military regulation states that mages may not enlist as soldiers until they pass their intermediate magic test. Sugar skipped right over the beginner test and did just that, proving exactly how skilled she is. Due to her youth, she is unable to completely shake off her fear of the battlefield, but conceals this from those about her by putting on a brave and cheery front. So she puts on a brave, cheery front just to have some confidence and, and do that sort of thing. That makes sense. And uh, she is the granddaughter of Mua. And so she kind of looks up to Eliza as kind of a big sister you know, kind of a big sister role going on there. Big sister, little sister role. So um, that's going on with that. And uh, she skipped over the beginner test and just, so she's very good with magic too. So it's, it's looking kind of like, it's looking kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's looking kind of like uh, maybe a Kai with Bill Cox scenario or, um, who could I really, who could I really like, guess that this is going to be like, I, I don't know, maybe the older Burgundian doesn't have a true a sort of pseudo connection here as far as like some cast and characters go. But, um, that's pretty interesting. I, I don't know if they do. I know Sophia and Philia aren't, you know aren't, I don't think they're sisters from Brigandine, but they're very close to each other with Leoness. So that sort of goes on there too, but this is kind of like a little different here. But um, she and her grandpop, um, it almost reminds me of maybe a Realm and Strato, Strago scenario with Final Fantasy VI, if you catch my drift. But... Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I can't really make a full connection here as to how this connects to, to which character in the older Brigadine game. But if you have a guess, I'd love to hear it, you know, as far as your um, guesstimation goes. But um, yeah, that's Sugar. So that's a very interesting name. I, I would not have guessed that Sugar would be a name in here. But um, I, I guess they're picking names based upon their the type of character they are. So it's sugar is sweet, sugar is energy, sugar gets you going. Um, so, you know, kind of the storyline kind of goes along with that. She's, you know, shake off her fear, conceals it, 
you know, by putting on a brave and cheery front. So brave and cheery, it kind of goes along with sugar. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the cast so far of the Republic of Gwimol. Uh I know some people might say it's Guimoli, but uh, I think the E might be silent. It sounds kind of like a French word. And, um, you know, there are some silent E's in English as well. And English does use French words also. So I think it's silent. So I'm just going to say Guimol. But if uh, developers and producers of this game want to help me say things more accurately, please leave it in the comments down below. But also, if you have any roles for English uh, voiceovers, I'd love to I'd love to help out and give give it a try with some of these things because I think I could do pretty well, and um, I'd like to I'd like to contribute to this game. I've been streaming this game and putting out videos for this for a very long time. I'd like to have some part in this. So just hoping, just hoping that maybe, maybe someone out there, someone out there will pass along the word. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all the characters here uh, that are here so far. And um, there aren't any more to showcase or talk about for the Republic of Gamol. And this is more of a republic than a kingdom, it seems, because there is a president. Um, She's the daughter of the bedridden president. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that's probably the case. And so, yeah, so that'll conclude this video. And as more information comes along, as far as what I can share with the Republic of Gomol, I'll make a separate video for that, part two. We'll have a part two for this, and we'll talk more about uh, the storyline and all the characters and everything that's involved in there. So I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Uh, anything you want to talk about if this if you're watching this from the future uh, because this will be on YouTube this is really just for YouTube and for probably some other platforms and you know it's it's a little bit different just let me know please don't be upset but you know this is um, my understanding of this now at uh, 327 2020 so I just want to let you know that as a disclaimer it's a disclaimer it's a little disclaimer for the video there so i hope you enjoyed it if you did please some like blah, blah, blah. leave some likes subscribe and all the good stuff and i'll see you next video where i will be talking about the shinobi tribe so we'll be going over that and as all the other tribes islands and empires and theocracies come along and we get more information i will go over all of that as well so next up shinobi tribe stay tuned and i hope to see you then over. It is over. When I say it is over.